Just like this, all the way around the, they called it a lake, Glenville Lake, but it wasn't really a lake, it was just a glorified pond. We used to go there quite extensively. Do you remember that? What? Going to Glenwood Park? Yeah. Now, in my hometown, watch out, there's a yellow jacket smash. We'll go up here and I'll show you. <laughs> but, in my, the area I grew up in, you can, um, you can come up to parts of the mountain with slate, what they call slate rock, and there's a lot of fossilized ferns. They've probably been there for thousands, of millions of years, actually. But you can find them all over the place. I used to have a ton of them. But I knew men that worked in the mines. And they told me that finding those was nothing. You'd find them all the time. And they, don't, they didn't realize what they were looking at. Because they, did, they had literally no education. They didn't realize that they were looking at fossils. I mean, it time. And that's what coal is. Yep. Coal exists because trees used to grow so big. Yeah, and when they would break and fall down, they would get compressed by other trees because there was no bacteria. Yeah, and back then trees didn't compost. Yeah. They just I just found out about that. That's what carbon is. 99% of that tree and every single tree surrounding us was made up of carbon. That carbon is stored in the, in the tree. And then it's through. These, this uh, growth you see here, yeah. is all carbon sequestered. Because this exists, it takes carbon out of the atmosphere. But the moment you take that tree, cut it down, dry it out, and burn it, or it falls down and rots, it releases that, that CO2 back into the atmosphere. And see, Something I would love to do with the landscaping company is go carbon negative. Meaning that for every pound of carbon I emit in the atmosphere, I take out more than I release. Mm -hmm. That would be very hard. I'd have to keep tabs on every single gallon of gas that I use. But it would be possible to go carbon.